The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a calming game. Beautiful scenery clouds your way as you venture a vast and quite frankly fun to explore Hyrule Kingdom. As you explore you hear the birds chirp, the horses whinny and probably more importantly for the atmosphere, the silent croaking of crickets and other bug-like creatures. To begin his quest, Link runs to four corners of the map. Each corner houses four giant mechanical beings. The Hero of Wilds would soon find out that these beings will be called Divine Beasts. These beasts serve to be the game's dungeons, and while they look amazing from the outside and offer a giant amount of potential, me and a large majority of people seem to think that these beasts, or otherwise known dungeons, are possibly the weakest aspect of Breath of the Wild. And while they certainly fit that atmosphere, they offered very little in difficulty and overall fun, possibly portraying some of the weakest dungeon areas in the entirety of the Zelda series to be honest. And we, the Zelda community, still adore the masterpiece that is Breath of the Wild. So when discussing this sequel to the game that we've been speculating on for about a year and a quarter now, dungeons is easily the first thing that we all jump to talk about. Why wouldn't we? If Breath of the Wild offered a hint of the amazing dungeon formula seen in the likes of the older 3D games, then I think we can all agree that we'd all easily be hailing it as the best game in the franchise. But that isn't what happened, and now they're making a sequel, is there really a chance it can be the best game in the franchise? Yes, there is a large chance this could topple the likes of Ocarina of Time, though I'm still nervous as it could be very easy to screw up this sort of opportunity. So let's talk a little bit about the biggest thing that the sequel to Breath of the Wild needs to do right. Dungeons. Dungeons are an integral part of the Zelda series, this is abundantly clear. Each game in the series literally revolves around the player walking around to get into dungeons, finding dungeon items and then finishing the dungeon to progress through the story. Over the years, the linearity of these dungeons has taken centre stage, meaning that you go to the dungeons in a completely set in stone order. For example, in Skyward Sword you go through Skyview Temple, the Earth Temple, Laneru Mining Facility, the Ancient Cistern, the Sandship, the Fire Sanctuary and Sky Keep, all of them in that exact order. Skyward Sword is the most linear game in the series, so that's why I used it as my example. Now let's talk about a less linear Zelda game, A Link Between Worlds. This game lets you go to any dungeon you want, and what's more, any time you want. This gives the player an immeasurable amount of freedom that I can only describe gives me childlike joy. Breath of the Wild was the least linear Zelda game to date by a fairly large margin. You don't only have the option to go to any dungeon from the second you meet Impa in Kakariko Village, you have the option to discover the world in whichever way you see fit. Don't want to go and do a dungeon yet? Feel way too weak? Go and increase your heart contains and stamina by doing some mini dungeons, shrines. Or perhaps go and find some new armor that you can upgrade whenever you find a great fairy. Would you like to get to the Sheikah Towers before you do anything else? Be my guest. Breath of the Wild signaled a new era for Zelda and even open world games. Hence why it won over 200 Game of the Year awards. So let's get into the main meat of this video. How could Breath of the Wild sequel realistically fix how barren the first game's dungeons were? And well, first I think we should discuss exactly what I saw an issue with in Breath of the Wild's dungeons. First of all and most obviously is a staple in the series, dungeon theming. Every single Zelda dungeon before Breath of the Wild had at least a small bit of theme that carried throughout. Possibly the most infamous and straight out version of this philosophy would be the water temple seen in Ocarina of Time. And while many players find the temple frustrating in comparison to most in that game, it is an amazing example of an excellently themed dungeon. Your entire venture through the temple revolves around the player lowering and heightening the water level to solve puzzles. It is the definition of what a water temple should be. Annoying, puzzly and straight out unfair, just like literally any other water level in the world. But that theme fits the area perfectly. A less infamous example of great theme in Ocarina of Time would be the Shadow Temple. This might be the most memorable temple in any of the Zelda games for me. The music and overall level design is perfectly crafted to scare the living crap out of you. I mean, what's this little fella? Theming always felt like a crucial part to the series dungeons, but Breath of the Wild showed us that sometimes dungeons will take a back seat when making a Zelda game, and in fact we've seen this before in the likes of Majora's Mask. And just like Majora's Mask, Breath of the Wild turned out to be amazing and changed the formula that we know a substantial amount. The thing is, there's a hint of theming in each dungeon in Breath of the Wild. Van Boris is a camel in a desert, but the idea isn't really extended on. Van Meadow is a flying bird and there's some glider based areas for that. Varudania starts you off by using fire to light up the way, and if you don't have fire resistant armor, you will burn outside. Varuta has a lot of water based puzzles set in the theme of, well, water. But that's actually my second issue with this game's dungeons. Don't get me wrong, I love puzzles and I think that Zelda games should have a good portion of puzzling. But these dungeons were all puzzling, and they were all kind of easy to puzzle through. Combat was near to non-existent until the boss fights. 
Guardians and Cursed Starheads are cool and all, but these are the only enemies really present in these dungeons. No mini bosses, not much else. And this wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if the backing music track to each dungeon wasn't so quiet, but perhaps that's just me. Right, so I've done my complaining. Sure, I could rip into a hell of a lot more, but you know, for example, the bosses. While bosses have still never been this hard in a Zelda game, they're still way too easy due to weaknesses, and they all look the damn same. I could go on with my complaints, but I need to talk about what the title says, Dungeons in Breath of the Wild 2. Now you might know that I'm friends with a few people in the Zelda community, plus I stalk pretty much everyone else in the community on Twitter, so you know it's true when I say that it seems pretty unanimous that open dungeons are the way to win the fanbase's dungeon loving heart back. When I say open dungeons, I'm not even saying that there should be quests to get inside of the temples. I think that the game should give you little to no indication of where dungeons are located and just let you explore. I mean, imagine walking down the tranquil valleys on the paths between Kakariko and Hateno Village, a normally serene walk, and then you spot something, a Zonai structure. You follow the path since this looks new, you haven't even discovered your first temple in the newest game yet, and a colossal door blocks your way. You walk up to it, and that prompt appears. You press A to open the door. Link passes into the door, and the screen fades to black. You've just discovered your first dungeon through exploration with absolutely no hints. Now that's exhilarating stuff. And while my example uses a probable forest temple as a dungeon in Calling, just imagine how cool some of the differently themed dungeons could be to find. Like slowly making your way round a fiery pit underneath Hyrule Castle and finding a dungeon entrance. Or perhaps the most exciting prospect out of all of this. How would a dark shadow temple set you up for a truly daunting experience? Perhaps you could be walking around the depths of Hyrule and you then you notice something in the distance. Is that a new enemy? You must know, and sure enough, it is. In fact, for long-term Zelda fans, it'll be easy to spot that this enemy is in fact a new variant of a fan favourite, Deadhand. Surrounded by tons of re-deads, upon defeating these enemies, the dungeon's doors open up, leaving you truly haunted before you even enter the dungeon's even more terrifying depths. While open dungeons clearly seem like an amazing idea in my opinion, I also know that there are some flaws to this. A big problem with this philosophy would be that the story would have to take a back seat, which is something that a lot of Zelda fans would not like to see. Though I am sure that the Zelda team would be able to pull it off in some sort of capacity. Possibly the biggest issue for this otherwise exciting idea would be that the game would most likely end up being ridiculously short as long as you know where all of the dungeon locations are. Not to mention that many people don't really want to explore everything in the world. They would rather finish the game as quickly as possible, and while they could search locations up, I think we can all agree that just using a guide for the entire game after buying it would be superfluous. And while I simply don't have the answers to such questions, I at least think that open dungeons would be a fun idea to try on a Zelda game in the future. Though I will say that dungeons could make up a substantial amount of your playtime if the game does end up being short, as the Zelda team will 100% want you to keep playing for long periods of time to keep the average playtime up. Theming wise, I think that all has really been said already. If you can establish a theme before you can even enter a dungeon, then you have truly grasped the player into your open world. However, let's move off the idea that all of the dungeons in the next game are going to be open. Instead, we see a new type of Sheikah Shrine that is always open. Perhaps the Zelda team do a complete 180 and decide to go back to the more linear style of the last few 3D Zelda games, meaning that you have to go through 7 or 8 dungeons in an order that never changes. Until the game releases, or at least has a new trailer, we can't really know any of this stuff. But I love speculation, and Breath of the Wild 2 speculation is fuel for me. Now, comment down below how you think dungeons in Breath of the Wild 2 will be done. Do you want open dungeons? Tell me down there. Go and follow my Twitter and Instagram on screen and in the description to keep up with what I'm doing. And join my Discord on my pinned tweet on Twitter. I also have a Patreon, so if you want and can support me financially, then please do consider it as you get some benefits as well. Link in the description. With all of that said, I'm so ridiculously hyped for the next Zelda game. Like the video if you enjoyed and can't wait for the next game yourself. And subscribe if you'd like to see more Zelda content from me every single week. Thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to watch. Stay safe and I'll see you all next week.